today we're going to look at some old school Photoshop compositing for creating packaging composites or in location mockups. Specifically, we'll be looking at placing graphics in perspective. Here's the thing while the moves that I'm going to show in Photoshop for actually getting these graphics onto a clean photograph are fairly straightforward and really um, very simple, actually. Um, it's all about the setup, just as with really anything you do in graphic design. It's all about the process. And when it comes to workflow, uh, all the things that you do to set yourself up for successful execution are really important. So I'd like to highlight a little bit of my workflow here and maybe point out a couple moves that you might not be aware of that can save you a lot of time along the way. I did pull a photo and die line from the Packaging and Die Lines 2 book. Uh, there are two of these. They are available for free download out at thedieline.com. If you're unaware, you can place these uh, pages from these uh, PDFs directly into Illustrator and there's vector artwork buried underneath these. They are buried in, everything's buried under here, in clipping masks. So I just drug into the side of this to catch the path that's creating the clipping mask. And I'm going to click on the edit contents target. And what I can do is then cut that off the artboard, delete the path that was creating the clipping mask. And now you can see I've got everything in, exposed in here. But what I can do, and normally the way this works for me, I just draw with the pen tool a loose outline. And then I go through and start snapping points to the individual panels that I need. So flash forward, uh, you can see where I started. I actually copied and pasted a few lines for the panels that I was going to start working with here on the bottom. And then these are my clean panels up top. Those get copied and pasted over into my artwork file. This is all of the artwork that I've been working with throughout a few of the demos that I've done. But up here, what I wanted to show you was how I cropped the vector artwork. This background is one rectangle that's the light color. The individual darker rays are separated. I grouped that whole thing. I've got my panels in here. My final mock-up shows uh, this is basically a box, but it isn't a square box. It's square to the front, rectangular to the side. I'm going to be seeing the left side panel in the front on my final composite or comprehensive. So I need these to stay together, and I need this artwork to be seamless. So the easiest way, so that's why they're snapped together like that. The easiest way for me to get this cropped into pieces, I'm going to select the background and the panel. Alt, Option, drag a copy over here to the side. I have Pathfinder open. I'm going to click on Crop, and that leaves me a nice, clean, cropped group of the piece of artwork I need. I'm gonna do the same thing with the left side panel. So now I have my left back. Um, I would work into doing these pieces the way I need. And then what I have set up for a final file is all of the pieces of artwork I need laid out by panel. Uh, the way that the process I'm going to show you here in Photoshop is laid out. You really need to have things by panels and this works best when you have a square area to cite your perspective by. Uh, I find the perspective tool 
to be kind of hit or miss. If it's if I'm working on obvious perspective, it works fine and it goes fast enough for me. Uh, when I'm working on something where the planes are really in extreme perspective, and that isn't so much the case here in this example that I'm showing, um, I find that the method that I'm going to use here, which is actually using distort, is a lot easier. Um, it kind of works like free transform, uh, where you can just drag the corners of things from the bounding box and makes it pretty easy. I did uh, as testing go ahead and mock up over here on the right hand side if we take a look at just what's in here for a box um, this is what's over here on this side having everything cut up i tackled the lip up top first um, i put a little color fill from a sample here on that edge so it looks nice uh, little perspective on the side here with the graphics on the inside. One tricky thing I did on the inside, um, and that would be here in the inside layer, and this is why you label things. On this layer here, uh, I actually did, and this is how you can take the edge off your vector graphics once you place them into Photoshop. Let me delete this layer. So the standard toolbox move that I use for placing vector graphics onto photos. I place the graphics, blending mode that layer on multiply, copy that layer, change the blending mode to soft light. That will pretty much pass any vector graphics to the package, pick up any light and shadow and texture that you have happening in the actual photo. The last move that I like to do to really sell the effect, because for me, uh, this is a little bright and a little crisp and looks like vector graphics. I didn't do this on the stuff on the outside of the box because I feel like that should be nice and crisp. But for these here with just the top soft light layer selected, I went uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I just put about 10 pixels of blur on this. And if I check and uncheck the preview, you can see what's happening in there. Um, that works for me, that does it. That sells the effect, takes the edge off the vector artwork. Um, and that really, really kind of works for me. All right, um, the front, I'll show you how to do that. Cut out really easily, everything placed there. So really, I'm gonna show you how to get two panels on here. The other thing that I have set up in this file is I've already pre-made a bunch of selections that are going to help me out along the way and I did that just based on the graphics I knew I was going to need while I was in here. Okay so I am um, let's just clean layers panel I'm at the very top of the layers panel I'm going to file embed File embed. Do not link this stuff. There's no reason when you're in Photoshop, also when you're in Illustrator, not to be embedding things as you're working. This is my Illustrator file of all my panels. I'm going to hit place. I need this solid square for the front of the box over here. I want it to crop to bounding box. That'll crop it to the vector artwork that's inside of here and not give me any flat white or extra transparency area, which is going to be really important as I'm getting this in the right spot. So move number one, I'm going to line up this bottom left hand corner. And the reason I'm using that one is just because I can see it well. And when I zoom out, I can now pretty much drag this panel. And what I'm going to line up now is my top left corner, at least get fairly close. I'm going to commit to that scale. You have to, if you go to do this and you go to edit transform, 
and distort is grayed out. What that means is this, uh, when you place embedded, Photoshop's gonna bring it in as a smart object, which is why you don't have to place linked. If I wanna go back and change this, I just double click right here on the smart object thumbnail. It'll let me go back and change it, come back and Photoshop will update. What I do need to do is make this not a smart object. I need pixel artwork or raster artwork. So I right click over the layer in the layers panel and hit rasterize layer. Now the entirety, almost the entirety of the transformations in here are gonna be available. I'm gonna use distort. And the way this works, you can now drag on any of the control points and place this in perspective on the box using the box as your guide. That right there is really the reason why I do this the way that I do. I can use the surface of the package to make sure that my perspective is correct. Now, you'll notice uh, if you really get into working with these photos out of these die line books. Did a great job putting together these mock-ups. They aren't totally clean and the lines aren't always straight lines. So I'm gonna air a little bit over as far as my size here. I already saved out a selection I can load that's gonna allow me to crop the front and side of this box once I get the graphics place. All right, there's my front in perspective. I can go ahead and do my, uh, get it on the package. Always multiply on the bottom layer for the blending mode. Then I just drag down into the new layer icon to duplicate, copy, put the top layer on soft light and boom. There it is. Even picked up this ridge, this highlight, and the way that the lighting is in here. All right, let's get the left side panel on here. And that's our board number three. Bounding box, yes. Uh, and I'm gonna go, actually wanna go pretty much directly to where this corner is set. I'm gonna snap that on there anyway. Uh, but the way I cut my artwork, I have to make sure that my corners are going to line up. So let's get a little farther. Let's go right here. That's pretty close for size. Now, number one, rasterize the layer, rasterize the artwork. So now I have pixels. Now my transformation will be available to me. So transform distort. I'm gonna zoom back in here. And let's make sure I get my corner snapped together. And that things are lining up inside of here. So right there, look at that. Graphics lining up. Uh, I could not have picked a more difficult set of graphics to demo with because um, that's a lot of stuff to line up on there. All right, so I wanna make sure I hit that top corner and I'm gonna pull in the bottom back. Remember, I am airing a little bit uh, to the outside on this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually creating an extra step for myself here, um, which you'll see in a minute with the cut, but it's good to see the stuff the long way around and not the quick way because I've been doing this for so darn long. All right, bottom on multiply, top on soft light. Now we can see I got my graphics laid on my package here. Um, I remember I did air a little bit larger than what I actually need. So I'm gonna load this selection that is the left front and side. 
All right, I'm gonna invert that selection. So I now have everything outside of the front of the packaging box. And then I'm gonna go through by layer, have to do it by layer. Um, it won't let you delete pixels from multiple layers at once. So I just flip through my layers panel there and repeatedly hit delete. I'm gonna deselect and now we can see I've got a nice clean front to a box. Let me get let me get the yolk and the egg on there. It's this one place for this one. I want to line up my sides. So we're gonna go this way, just like this. Uh, my sides are pretty much straight up and down. So once I rasterize. Once I get this on here, I'm really just going by the bottom corners and have to make sure I run straight up the sides. I'm not actually going to have a top for this one. Distort and you go right here and you should come up to right here the way that was. So I'm siding by parallel to the bottom front of the package. That puts that in there quite well, actually. Uh, this corner, I want to take run one more run at. I could just delete that off there, but I think instead, I'm just going to give myself, uh, I am going to delete it off there. And let me do that here before I do anything else. So I'm gonna load back that same left front side selection. I'm gonna invert that and then I'm gonna I'm gonna invert that, then just delete that little corner piece out of there. Uh that was odd. Here it did something weird to my artwork. All right, there we go. That's better. Now we can. All right, so here's the thing when I pass this with multiply and then duplicate and then put this on soft light it's trying to pass through onto the graphics because they're of the burst sunburst behind there because of the way this stuff is layered. So what I need to do is delete this part of the graphics from the background. And the easiest way I can do that, if you're unaware of this command, um, this shortcut, if I hold command, if you happen to be on a PC, um, number one, sorry about your life. Number two, that translation is hold down control on a Mac. It's hold command, click on the layer thumbnail. That selects all the pixels on the layer. And what that will allow me to do is go back to my front panel and delete those graphics out. And now I have uh, nice clean graphics on here. The last thing that I am going to do is add a blank layer up the top. This uh, extra stuff from the lid up here, I made a selection for that. Left lid poking up. I'm gonna go ahead and load that. I already using the eyedropper have sampled this kind of in shadow off this lid over here into my foreground color. You can see it right here. And the move that I am about to do is edit fill. And the shortcut for that is shift delete if you're on a Mac. And all you have to do is set the contents to foreground color and boom. All right, so that is just solid color though. I have to do the same multiply copy soft light move to get that to actually look like it's there on the box. 
All right, that is what I have for you. The moves over here on the left side really just involve more selections. The process is exactly the same. Obviously, I would need to shadow this in correctly. Um, and really all you have to do to accomplish that is add a, um, obviously you're gonna flip it upside down by panel, but all you really have to do is add a, give me a black to white gradient. So I just put a, let me step back. So this right here is this, all of this artwork. Let's pretend it's just the front panel. I'm gonna put a quick mask on this. I'm in the mask right now. And what I need to do, and this is gonna go white to black. So it's going to reveal to hide, just like that. And then if I, let's pretend, let's pretend here, uh, I'm not sure what I just selected. Apologies for that. All right, so I need this group now, which is masked. And I'm gonna turn it upside down. I'm missing the graphic, obviously, but you can kind of see how this works. And you have to do it by panel. This is actually incorrect because now I'm upside down. Um, but what you can see is once I have that mask like that, it'll act like the shadow on the bottom of this box down here. Um, maybe that full reflection is, I know there are good tutorials for that um, searchable on YouTube. Uh, here you go. Enjoy.